Um, coming back to the live that we did on Rumble and YouTube last night, there was a question regarding whether the electrolytes can help with gout and lower um, uric acid. And I don't know if it was just because... Um, I, you guys probably don't know this, but I, I had a migraine last night. Um, so I was blind. <laughs> I was on the screen and I couldn't see. Um, there was uh, there's a, a lot of viruses going around. Um, uh, my uh, wife and little girl came down with it last week, and I've managed to keep it at bay. They've been violently sick and bedridden for days, which I haven't, which is brilliant and testament to. You know, I, I would die yet. Um, but yesterday, I sort of started to feel the tail end of it. So I, um, yeah, towards the end, I couldn't really focus or concentrate. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't, I didn't know. But there we are. So after, um, when I went home, um, migraine started to clear up. And I was thinking about this question. And then I started looking through the research and things and questions that people were asking me recently. Um, and it was there in black and white, that potassium citrate and magnesium citrate. And it was a question that we've answered so many times. Um, but in the heat of the moment, when someone asked it, I couldn't remember the answer. So, <laughs> so apologies for that. But yes, it looks like it, it is heavily backed with research that the potassium citrate, magnesium citrate can help lower the uric acid and help with, with gout issues. Um, so there we are. We've got a couple of questions coming in. Thank you, Steve. So, yeah. Peter, sleep. Oh, do you want to read them out, Steve? Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Uh, I know much I love reading. Uh, I love it, yes. I was terrible yesterday when we had Chafee on. I couldn't get my words right. Anyway, uh, sleeping inconsistencies. One for both of you guys. I had some success with the sleeping supplement ZMA. For sleep over the years, big event approaching, inflammation, poor recovery. Apparently, it's a blend of zinc, magnesium, and B6. It did work, high carb scenario on occasions. However, caused extremely vi vivid dreams. I guess Rich will confirm it is all present in meat. Yeah, yeah, for certain. <laughs> so it's zinc, magnesium, B6. Every, in fact, um, no, I haven't got it. I'll, um, I was going to show you a screenshot of every vitamin and mineral that is present in uh, animal proteins, particularly beef, but it contains literally everything. Every vitamin and mineral we need not just to survive but thrive is found in, in animal proteins. And what makes it more um, uh, attestable to live in a lifestyle um, is that things like vitamin B6, uh, vitamin B3, um, zinc, iron, magnesium, they can all be blocked by as much as 100% with the co-ingestion of other compounds such as lectins uh, and phytic acid. So it isn't just the case of eating the meat, which all of these compounds are in high quantities in. If you're co-consuming them with things like um, bread, pasta, rice, so on and so forth, cereal, why you'd have zero with your meat is beyond me, but just for an example, <laughs> the phytic acid in there is enough to block the absorption. So it, the reason I say that is it's not just enough to eat a piece of meat. What you co-consume with it has a massive impact on how that is absorbed within the body. And then supplements like ZMA come in handy because we're taking them at a different time around from meal times and it's not competing with 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 that absorption. But yes, all in high quantities in in red meat in particular. Um, yeah. Let's go on to yeah. the next question, should we, Steve? Well, no, can I can I chime oh, in? Just... Yeah, so, sorry, yeah, of course so, done, yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing is there, B6 is included because it, uh, it assists with the conversion of uh, tryptophan to serotonin. So we're going back to tryptophan being a sort of factor in sleep which I always think is really interesting because there's many people that deny the tryptophan in Turkey, for instance, does make you sleepy, but it does seem to make people sleepy. Now, whether that's placebo because they believe it's going to work um, and, and it's worked in the past, or whether it's the B6, uh, you know, uh, that we've already got in the diet and then the additional tryptophan turning into serotonin, I don't know. But 
I just thought it's quite a good idea, isn't it, as a supplement? It's, it is hitting the right things, but um, definitely you could get it from food. So, you know, I've... Uh, and also not sweating over it. This is one of the things. We've been talking about biphasic sleep nearly every week and, and boring people with it, I think, a little bit. But the moment I realised it doesn't matter if I get up at five and it doesn't matter if I get up at six or seven, if I just get up when my body wants me to get up... Uh, and I forget that I need eight hours. Oh, it's five o'clock in the morning. I should be asleep still till seven. Once you forget the stress of that, um, it actually becomes irrelevant. And I sort of think it is quite analogous to, you know, this way of eating. Because some people come over to carnivore and they're constantly told, well, you're not going to get enough nutrients. You're not going to get enough vitamins, minerals. It's going to kill you, whatever. And I think that actually does stop some people transitioning successfully because those little niggly worries don't help so i think we need to be a bit stronger in you know and i'm talking about me i talk for me but i i would say for you rich we just got to keep going on about how this way of eating does not have any deficiencies yeah just doesn't have them so yeah i mean on the basis of that i'll see if i can find this graphic that i've i've used several times before but coming back to what you just said steve it um yeah the interesting thing is that serotonin is synthesized with vitamin b6 and um uh, and magnesium, but if if tryptophan is low, it will use B three niacin, um, so it'll convert niacin into um, into uh, serotonin into tryptophan at a rate of sixty to one, which means that you you it could leave you deficient basically in B three, um, and this is why consuming all of the B compounds um, are incredibly important. And this image is in here somewhere. I know it is one of the many studies. It's, um... So while you're doing that, I just want to say I've, I've been over to the Mighty Networks and there's no messages there waiting for me to say uh, we can't get in. So I'm going to shut that window. And I've also gone on to school. So um, the people that said they were going to turn up, uh, this is this is them. <laughs> I thought we'd have a few more. But anyway. I see that. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hi, I couldn't. I, hi, good things. I couldn't get in. I thought the meeting was off again. I thought it was off last week because I because I missed it because I couldn't get in, and I was just the same thing happened again. But I went to school, the school app, mm. and I got in that way. But I got emailed. I must have got emailed automatically the old link. So right. I was sat there waiting. It said the meeting host is wait, is going to let you in soon, and I was sat there waiting. So the school link did work, but I got emailed. Obviously, an old link. So there might, might be some issues. <laughs> okay, right. Well, we'll sort that. I mean, it will get better. I promise you. Anyway, sorry, Rich. You were going to say about beans, beef versus beans. Yeah. So no, it was the image on the right that I was looking at. So the, basically, the image on the left shows um, um, the amino acid profile in beef, basically compared to uh, a vegetable. Uh, compound, i.e. kidney beans. But it's the image on the right that is really important. And as you can see, there's every vitamin and mineral that we need, not just to survive, but thrive, is found in massive quantities as soon as we go over that red line. But the interesting thing with that diagram is that it's based on 100 grams. We wouldn't eat meat based on 100 grams. You know, we don't go to the the supermarket and pick up 100 grams of chicken breast. It's it's one chicken breast or two chicken breast, which is about 130 grams. Um, you know, we wouldn't cut 100 grams of, of beef steak, for example. You know, it, uh, the average steak would probably be maybe 500 grams, um, or in my case, a, a kilogram. <laughs> so these, these figures can be comfortably multiplied by pick a number. But when we look at the vegetables... Uh, blueberries and kale, for example. I mean, based on 100 grams, 100 grams of kale is an awful lot of kale. So that's a lot of kale to put into, um, you know, your meal. And most people, to do so, would do so via a smoothie, which is uh, a recipe for disaster, as we discussed on our um, on our recent um, uh, vegan versus carnivore episode, wasn't it? Where we um, and we can go into that if, if if you like a little bit later, Steve. In regards to um, I lost my trail of thought with that now, but let's come back to the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> so every vitamin and mineral, vitamin A down to zinc, and I think that that's that's quite a a striking graphic, isn't it? You know, every vitamin and mineral, um, and the things that 
the vegetable side doesn't contain we'll keep it short because um I don't want to bore you too much, but there's no vitamin A in vegetables. Vegetables do not contain vitamin A. They contain beta carotene, which is a precursor that needs to be acted upon by an enzyme called BCMO in order to convert it into the active form of retinol. B vitamins are almost non-existent, um, with you know, niacin and B6 pyridoxine being incredibly low, uh, cobalamin B12 being non-existent. You cannot get cobalamin or vitamin B12 from, from a plant. Um, vitamin D, you cannot get from plants. We can get it from the sun, but interestingly, the best source of vitamin D, believe it or not, is in fact animal proteins. And the reason being is that when we create or synthesize vitamin D in the skin um, from UVB rays, it's doing so in order to work as a sunscreen. So it will decrease cholesterol, which as you guys know, um, we don't want to be decreasing because cholesterol is essential for life. Um, and we can get into more detail on that if you like also, but... That's what the sun is doing. The sun is going to deplete your your body's cholesterol in order to create vitamin D, to create a sunscreen to protect your skin. So the best form of vitamin D comes from animal proteins. Um, vitamin E we can get from plants, but we can get it in higher quantities and abundance in, in animal proteins, particularly eggs. Um, K vitamins we cannot get from, from plants. Um, in the supermarket, every pack of kale has a stamp on there that says high in vitamin K or a good source of vitamin K. But kale contains vitamin K1 and the human body needs vitamin K2. And again, in order to convert the K1 into K2, it does it so inefficiently close to zero as converted. And it's the same story with lots of other of these uh, nutrients in there. You know, we've got creatine, choline, carnitine, carnosine, some of which are not even referenced there. We cannot get any of these from plants. So when you will live in, you know, a ketogenic or carnivore-based lifestyle and you get questioned in regards to where your vitamins and minerals are coming from, you should always rest assured that that piece of beef or lamb or chicken and eggs, so on and so forth, contains every vitamin and mineral that you need. And again, not just to survive, but thrive. Vegetables are not a good source of vitamins and minerals, and they come with a whole host. And I'm not putting people off eating vegetables. Um, you know, obviously by the name, I work heavily in you know the keto community, and I'm all for for vegetables. You know, if if that's what that person, if if that's the position of that, that person is at at that point in their journey, but always understand the vegetables come with a whole host of plant toxins, phytoalexins, um, defense chemicals that are designed for for you know to damage and harm a predator. Some is slow release, some is quick. Um, but they all cause issues uh, long term. After the live yesterday, um, Stephen and I came off with, with Dr. Chafee and we, we spoke for another hour after in regards to another podcast that we're going to um, look at recording in regards to the amount of plant toxins um, found in plants um, that it will take to kill a person. And um, yeah, I think, you know, Chafee was quite shocked, wasn't he? And, you know, and he knows about all of these compounds as well, but... When we broke it down, we looked at flax seeds, for example, something that people chuck into smoothies um, and believe that they confer a benefit because possibly um, omega-3s. But the omega-3s in there are not converted into EPA and DHA anyway. Uh, but flax seeds contain a compound called linamarin, which is a cyanogenic glycoside, which breaks into hydro hydrocyanic acid, which becomes cyanide. So flax seeds contain cyanide and around 30 milligrams per 100 grams. Um, and so that means that there's around 6 milligrams per serving of 20 grams. So a bit of numbers going on there. But 6 milligrams per serving and 50 milligrams is enough, has been proven been enough to kill an adult human being. The reality is that it will probably take a lot more if you gain, uh, if, if, you, if you're uh, bigger and you, you carry more weight but as little as 50 milligrams. And when you think that one serving of flax seeds contains six, is incredibly shocking. An apple with eight to 10 seeds or pips, um, eight, six to eight of those apple cores thrown into a smoothie could be enough to, to kill a person and more certainly, uh, you know, a young child. And, and this is why um, I guess so worked up, I think, in regards to um, these these fads that go on in regards to juicing and smoothies and and I'm I'm all for people pursuing healthier uh, lifestyles, but when they 
passing these on to young children, um, they are not aware of how toxic these compounds are. And that is the reality that these 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 items, these fruits and vegetables at a level are toxic. Spinach with the oxalates, for example, 3,000 milligrams of oxalates has been known to kill an adult human being uh, with 15,000 milligrams will kill you dead. Um, some packs of kale per 100 grams have been shown to contain 1,600 milligrams. Um, which is half that amount. That is on the rare side. It's usually a lot less than that, mind. Um, but it, they are out there. So these compounds that we pick up in the supermarket that we believe to be, you know, what, what's what's the saying, Steve? Um, eat the rainbow. You know, the, all of yes. these compounds are, it's, it, they're full of these toxins. Uh, and, and that is the reality. So, sorry, I've gone off on a rant, but that, that's that's my... You have. Yes, I'm going to interrupt you there because after I spoke to you and Anthony yesterday, um, I sent him something uh, which was a statement about cyanide from the WHO that there is no safe limit and uh, he wanted to know the source. So I went to the WHO, went into their documents and went into their resources and it's absolutely frightening what they're hiding you know, firstly, it's buried very deep. You cannot find it on a Google search. You and I, and I said that to him. I said you have to interrogate something like Chat GPT to find out where to go, and then you go down. But anyway, the bottom line is there are this stuff I didn't even know. To be honest, we're talking about cyanide, uh, which is which is you know in apples, like you say, and it's in uh, cassava. You know, the flower that they make. Um, the Oranges, w- tangerines. Yeah, loads of things, almonds, loads of things, and um, they've they've documented certain populations, certain countries where people are dying, and the level is less than fifty milligrams. It, it's oh. really, really frightening. And the two things I thought were really good, and it, uh, you know, it's been a difficult day because there's a, a lot of research, but they're even thinking there's possibly a link in diabetes and uh, thyroid damage. Just from these small amounts, so so they're not fair. They're not right when they publicly say that they think the safe limit is twenty to fifty, because actually what they're saying in this document isn't saying that. What it says in this document very clearly, and I've sent it to Chafee so we can make it public, is there is no safe, there is no safe level because they cannot establish it, and they find too many things where small amounts have actually killed people, killed families, in fact. Uh, which was pretty sad. Um, so anyway, we'll go on to the next question. You're right to rant because, you know, that made me want to rant because it's there, but it's buried in all, you know, uh, the the admin. Uh, Caroline had the question about rosacea, skin condition. Has anyone who suffers with rosacea, more common in females, experienced increased flare-ups on carnival? Initially, my skin was great, possibly due to the increased water intake. But uh, lately, flare-ups have become much worse than before. I mean, I've, you know, to answer that as it, it's asking, has anyone experienced that? No. I mean, in five years of coaching Carnivore exclusively, or pretty much exclusively, I've never had a client say that. Um, certainly had the complete reverse, 180 degrees, where it just gets better and better and better. So there could be something else going on that's flaring up, I think. Um, have you come across it, Rich? Um, I used to suffer and probably still do with rosacea under the eyes and down the side of the cheeks. Um, but I mean, this was a pre-existing problem that um, um, that I've never really gotten to the root cause of. But it's uh, for me, it can be you know I I train a lot, um, so I mean I'm always I'm always running hot. Um, so I mean that could be a big condition, uh, a big uh, contributing factor for me. Uh, in regards to people developing it, the only time that I've seen skin conditions develop during carnival um, is, uh, so there could be a number of things, th- th- two things in particular. One is it could be too much fat again. Um, I think this we had a question similar to this last night, didn't we, in regards to um, in- I- I- skin conditions and skin issues. But if the if the uh, the body is incapable of processing the volume of fat that you're consuming, it will cause skin irritation, skin conditions, and possibly flare-ups. Um, so reduce the fat could be an option. Um, eat less fat. Don't cook in fat. 
Uh, just use the fat from the meat to, to cook the meat in and then don't pour the fat that is is in the pan over. Um, you don't need to be adding butter, tallow, lard, ghee. Um, maybe remove things like um, cheese and double cream, you know, if you are using these. Um, so those will be the the, the first two uh, lines of, of, of attack there. The, the other thing could be that you might be suffering from a reaction to one of the foods that you are eating, even within the carnivore community, even though the carnivore lifestyle is um, almost like it's, it's a full elimination diet in regards to we take all the plants away, which are generally what cause most of these issues. 99.9% comes from you know the grains in the form of wheat germaglutinin, the phytohemagglutinin, the, the other lectins and phytic acids and, and all the, the flavonoids and endocrine disruptors found within within the vegetable world. And once we remove those the flowers seem to blossom. But even within the carnival community, people can still um, build a reaction to several compounds. Eggs can be one. Um, other, you know, dairy, d- uh, double cream, cheese, um, Greek yogurt, uh, fish, um, coffee, all of these things. And what happens is, even though you may be consuming these all of your life, when you begin to consume less of everything else, we begin to consume more of the things that we can consume. And within the carnivore remit, you know, whether you're for coffee or not, you know, keto is a, is a big, there's a big thing with coffee and bulletproof coffee. And that was the big movement, wasn't it? You know, several years ago. And I still drink coffee. I just don't drink as much uh, as I did prior to that. And I still add the MCT and fat to my coffee because it does do, you know, uh, all of the things that um, the people rant about. And, and we see all these positive benefits. But, um, but when we become ketogenic or carnivore, you know, I noticed I began to drink originally more coffee and then I began to eat more eggs and I began to eat more fish and all this because I was removing all of the other compounds. And what I've noticed personally is that the deeper that I go down the rabbit hole, the the more my body becomes, I don't want to say sensitive, um, more highly attuned. Um, I don't want to it almost feels like my body has created these reactions because I'm limited, but it's just given my body an exaggerated response. It's given my body the, the chance to tell me that it doesn't like certain compounds. And for me, compounds that used to work incredibly well, um, such as chicken and pork, don't work so well for me anymore. Um, I still consume them because I love chicken. I, lo- I love, you know, we, we've spoke yesterday, I think somebody mentioned chicken thighs or chicken legs with um, cooked in the air fryer with a ch- crispy chicken skin. Um, yeah, there we are. Um, amazing. And I love it. Um, but compounds now, such as chicken and pork, I can only consume once a week. If I consume more than that, then it seems to cause issues with me. Um, not skin issues, but reactions in regards to gastro distress, um, lethargy and... Um, just a whole, whole sense of not feeling as good as I do when I just eat beef and lamb. And again, that's not to say not to consume these compounds, but it just means that there could be uh, a contributing factor there that you've come into the lifestyle and now maybe you're eating more eggs, which could be contributing. Uh, ovocobalamin, uh, sorry, ovomucoid, uh, which is one of the proteins in in, in eggs, um, could be con- contributing to uh, a reaction possibly, and so on and so forth. So it, it could be a case of maybe just becoming... Um, strict lion for a, a week or two and seeing if it clears up. But my inclination would be that it's more to do with too much fat. Uh, and I think if we address the fat first, then maybe you won't have to go down the elimination protocol. So so that's what I would try first. Yeah, good answer. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Matthew cannot come because uh, um, he's uh, studying. But he wants to check that you've got a consultation with him tomorrow and he can do either 12 o'clock or 4 p.m. So, sorry about that in the middle of a meeting, but Matthew normally turns up. Yeah, Why are you looking at that? I'll, p- I'll ping him a message now. Yeah. Uh, Monica has a question. Hello, Monica. I can see you sitting there. Uh, hello. My son is 17 years old and has bad acne and now eczema, or eczema, as you say in America. Hay fever season has started for him. He wants to do carnivore. Any tips for teens? Also, can he start taking electrolytes? Many things. Yeah, most definitely. So I used to suffer with severe skin conditions, and I'm going to use, I'm going to see if I can find a picture actually to use at the War on Health at the end of the month. 
um my face was covered in 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 fact they were more like boils than acne uh and i had them constantly to the point where i i had to cover up with um with foundation um makeup in order to recover them as embarrassing as that is to say but my back was constantly plastered uh, and i suffered with them all of my all of my life um since becoming ketogenic everything has cleared up and the deeper that i've gone down towards carnivore and the more that they and I, I barely suffer with any skin conditions anymore and if i do now it's usually to do with being sweaty from training but it's um, not that that's an image anybody wants to see, but it's I I, I don't suffer with skin. Ca- My face used to look like um, like the moon. It was a creator face, and that's no exaggeration. Um, so uh, can we just address the question though? Because if you're a teenager, it, it's it's not the it's not different. You know, carnivore is the same. Yeah, that, of course it is. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. So I, th- I think Rich has you know got that personal experience. But he wasn't a teenager when he started it. But he would have done exactly the same as a teenager, did the same foods or eliminated the same foods and and uh, eat the same foods. And this is one of the things that I think is quite bad in the space is uh, people think that children need to be treated differently. And they absolutely don't. No. Absolutely. You know, if you want a ribeye and your son of 17 wants a ribeye, that's fine. If he doesn't fancy ribeye and he wants uh, chicken, you know, he wants uh, fish. As long as it's an animal product, is is going the right way. That's what that's what I would say. Sorry to interrupt you there, Rich, but you know, this is. I wanted to address that because I see that you know, at least once a week, someone says, "Oh, my my son is fourteen. Can he do carnivore?" And you think, "Well, he's a human." You see, yeah. uh, not not saying anything bad about you, Monica, is, and it is very frustrating because it's it's the right food. It's you know, do you want a seventeen-year-old eating pizza? No one ever. You know, no one ever says, "Oh, uh, that's okay." Um, um, that is exactly it. Yeah, you know. So it uh, that's that. One hundred percent spot. And when I was, you know, stuffing my face with Burger King, McDonald's, Domino's pizza, KFC, and uh, and I and I went through spells of eating poor food, but I did try to eat healthy beyond that from the food pyramid and the eat well plate, so on and so forth. But when I was stuffing my face with with all of this fast food, nobody had anything to say to me. Walking down the street with pop tarts and whatever, remember that craze. Um, <laughs> but now, because you eat a piece of steak, people think that you're going to die. And just take a step back and think about that logically. You know what idiots are we to have ever believed such a notion? And Steve, completely right. It's real food. It's all you know. It, if you're happy for, um, you know, I'm in the same position, Monica. When it comes to my little girl, um. It, you know, she's not in regards to, to 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 this type of food. I would have her be in full carnivore if I had my way. Um, unfortunately, I don't. And yeah, that's, <laughs> well, your uh, your wife rules the roast. You say this is uh, well, it, yeah. It, the, the, I'm teasing him. I'm the, 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 sort, the source of many arguments. Let me tell you, there's um <laughs> and um yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but she's she's eight, isn't she? So and, and the. the the point I'm getting out there, you see, is you didn't think, well, she's eight. I've got to do a special kind of a diet for eight. I would feed her steak and eggs. So yeah. she she eats what her mum makes her, um, which is, yeah, <laughs> talk for another day. But uh, I make Monica, sure that... are you an happy answer about the carnivore? And yes, what, what, but what coming about back, electrolytes? what about electrolytes? Because that's also in the question. Yeah. So just really coming back to to these other issues as well, especially with eczema, Monica. It, they are autoimmune issues, um, and when you heal that gut lining, all of these things start to clear up. So th- this is definitely the way for the way forward. If he's happy to begin, then cook him a steak. Fantastic. And no issue with electrolytes. And it's the same with electrolytes. Electrolytes are also essential for life. They're found in all the compounds that we consume um, in the real foods, i.e., you know, the animal proteins. Um, but we are heavily devoid. Um, the meat today isn't as nutrient dense as it once was. The electrolytes uh, are not in, um, you know, they, they are in the, in the right ratio, but they're not in the levels that they once were. And coming from an area of maybe insulin resistance, then there's going to be a requirement for additional um, sodium in particular in the beginning and then the potassium to combat the sodium and so on and so forth. But you may even be able to come off electrolytes 
eventually, you know, there's lots of people within the space who don't need to consume electrolytes. I I think they work incredibly well for me, so I could still consume them, but uh, no issue with with the electrolytes either. So yeah, that's the. <laughs> That's well, I think it's Steve was prompt. They need to do. Yeah, yeah. a seventeen-year-old is coming from a sort of not carnivore way of eating and not particularly healthy. The electrolytes will mitigate any issues with possibly getting keto flu and those sort of things because there will be a little bit of water weight loss, even if you don't think there's any excess water or water retention. Once you take the glucose out or the carbohydrates, however you want to word it, um, you will see a little bit of water weight lost. Uh, and with that goes the electrolytes. So that's that's the rationale behind the electrolytes. You stop that before it starts. So, um, yeah, great answer. Um, next week, by the way, I can't do Monday. And there's a space in the calendar. So, Rich, if you want to manually set up a, a Zoom for next Monday, that's uh, that's your call there, if you could do it without me. Because I'm doing all the admin here, letting people in, doing the questions. Or we could have a week off. But um, I think we've got another question come in. Let's have a look. Uh, right, Helen. Hello, Helen. I'm trying to educate my 13-year-old daughter and 9-year-old son. She is gluten-free and finally they both eat beef and plenty of chicken. Peer pressure is hard for them nowadays at school and with friends as they seem to be surrounded by carbs and sugar. What we do at home is a good start. Yeah, I don't think that's a question. That's a good statement, though. And that is the problem. As you were saying, Rich, you know, I'm really lucky. I don't have anyone of that age, but I would be pulling my hair out if I was you. Exactly the same. Anyone in this room that's got kids, uh, they're trying to eat the right way. They go to school and they've got, you know, these beautiful, colourful things with little dinosaurs on or, you know, cars or princesses. And, you know, they look fabulous. And it's it's just rubbish it's just not food and uh if all their friends are eating that and they don't eat that and then you know when you're that age you don't want to be picked on you don't want to be different you know it's, it's much 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 harder for children uh at school to eat the right way it really is yeah and uh helen's just put in yeah she pulls her hair out it, it's horrific yeah i i've given a, a talk to um, a number of schools in regards to, and in fact, it, Steve, it may be worth us recording the, this this talk. Um, it, it's all information you guys have seen before, just put into one thing. And, and I didn't, when I spoke to them, there was no mention of low-carb keto or carnivore. It was all in, uh, in regards to nutrient-dense foods, why meats contain more nutrients and why we shouldn't cook in seed oils and why we should remove the grains. So there was no mention of low carb keto or, or anything else. It was all to do with health and well-being. Um, but they want change and it is super frustrating. Um, it is. It's it's horrific and it's, it's incredibly difficult to deal with. Uh, and I guess you are completely right. All we can do is control what we can control. And... Mm. We can control what we do at home. Um, we can't control. And that's the other thing as well. When my little girl goes over to her friend's house um, and her mum cooks food, I don't want to be saying, oh, you know, she can't eat this, so just cook her steak. And cause I just not my place to be, you know, saying, um, I couldn't say that she's allergic to certain things. Um, but then I don't want her to be ostracised if they if they go out to a birthday party and, and they're all eating cake and... Mm. So I I wouldn't stop her from doing those things, but I think it's important for them to understand what real food is. My little girl knows what real food is um, to the point where she hides things from me and I don't want her to hide because I'm so, you can imagine what I'm, what I'm like, Um, (laughs) you know, I'll, I quite often go through the cupboards and just chuck out all the rubbish that has been bought or given um, because it isn't food. But I don't want my little girl to hide things. Um, and yeah, the two of them were doing it, you know, like coming home with a McDonald's one night and sneaking it. And it's like, you know, I don't want you to consume it, but I don't want you to hide it from me either. And that, and, and it's it's a fine line, isn't it? And, you know, Helen can probably attest to that. It's a difficult balance in regards to... To play devil, devil's advocate, they are thinking of you. They yeah. don't want to upset you. So, I mean, this is this is analogous to the well-meaning friend that says, or partner that says to you, or oh, that carnivore, I'm really worried about you eating all that fat. You know, 
they're, yes, they're misinformed, but they're not malicious, are they? They're just doing it because they don't want to hurt you. They don't want to see you hurt. So, you know, it, it, it is really tough. I mean, I remember when I used to watch telly, there was a thing Jamie Oliver was trying to get across to kids. And I, I, I will praise this with, I can't believe they actually showed the end result. And he wanted to show kids what, what um, turkey Twizzlers were like from uh, the base to, to being a turkey Twizzler, which was a very popular sort of uh, protein-based food, allegedly. So he he showed these kids, they had this bunch of kids, and, and then he got all the really bad, horrible-looking ingredients that they use in turkey Twizzlers, you know, which was gross. And he was going to kids, look at this, and they're all going, rah, 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 rah. right, and you think, oh, well, we know where this is going. And then he doused it, he got a garden hose and doused it with water and uh, put it in a tumble dryer and did all the things that they do to process the turkey Twizzlers. Uh, you know, covered it in rubbish, basically. And then went, so they'd seen all this horrible processing and he went, who's going to eat these? And they all went, woo, woo. <laughs> so it absolutely shows you that kids, once they see it's a dinosaur and it's breaded, they'll eat it. But they'd seen what it was, so which is not knocking the intelligence of children. It's uh, actually the point being how brainwashed they are. That it didn't matter that it came from this horrible slop and it had all these terrible processes and it had been in a tumble dryer and it had been soaked with a garden hose. None of that mattered. And, the, and all along the way, they were going, what are you doing that for? That's going to be horrible. you know, and, and all the stuff that the producers and directors were thinking, yeah, this is golden, this is golden. So I can't believe they actually showed that last bit, but they did. And it's one of those moments when you're watching something on telly and thinking, well, that went wrong, didn't it? <laughs> but it did prove that you can educate people at that age or children, you know, at that age, and it still is not going to stop them doing it. They knew it was rubbish, but they still all wanted to hit it. Um, there wasn't even one dissenting voice that was, you know, shouted down or whatever. There wasn't one kid going, oh, no, I don't like the look at that. So it was it was pretty telling. Anyway, Helen's put, Easter eggs are bigger than ever in Tesco's this year. I don't know if you mean by size or bigger as in, yeah, yeah. Um, we had the talk on how many Easter eggs they can have this year. My kids do understand, and my daughter is going through the hormone stage in life with what they uh, call puppy fat. Uh, even thought she's very act, even though she is very active. It's how the food is marketed. They are brainwashed. Ex exactly. I mean, these eggs look fabulous. They do. They're all shiny and wonderful colours. And um, what's the company? Uh, Quality Street or one of those people that make the sweets. And they used to come with very glittery, lovely coloured, uh, you know, different coloured for different sweets in their in the tin. And to be woke and environmentally friendly, they got rid of all the colouring and they got rid of all the glittery stuff and their sales plummeted. Absolutely plummeted. Because it looks like a tin of dirge. I mean, it really looks like a, a picture from Russia in the 1960s of what a treat was. It, it, it's, it's so unappetising. So even when you know it's rubbish, you can appreciate that they're brilliant at packaging it. They're brilliant. I mean, if you if you look at like Rich's electro electrolytes, I haven't got one to hand here. You know, it's the orange is bright. All the all the wording's fantastic. You know, and you carefully put the design together, don't you, Rich? Well, if it was just a grey tub with electrolyte written on it, you wouldn't you wouldn't sell as many if you know it's actually quite good for you. Well, so is, I've been there. It's what kids fall for. Yeah. Spot on. So, I mean, the original design that um, that I made was was just a green logo with Keto Pro in on on a white label, um, and it's I think the you know the designs that I'm using now are probably the sixth or seventh um, designs that we've applied. Um, you know, as the business has progressed. But you you're right. I mean, it's the Keto bars. You know, they look well, they look cool, don't they? You know, but the ingredients in mine are 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 good you know they're, they're not uh, not if you can't have obviously because they contain cocoa powder but um and almonds um <laughs> but i've got a couple of questions sorry rich I, I i ranted there but this is a really good one because um uh, we just talked about it how long does it this is from kate's by the way and montezuma's by the way do clean easter eggs 
as in no emulsifiers and less ingredients. That's from Lydia. Thank you. Kate has put, hi there. How long does it take for the stomach to settle down after starting carnivore, please? And can carnivore help with MS? I'll just answer that last one. I've had two success stories with MS where, one, um, the consultant got cross because the lesions weren't there anymore. And he actually slammed, this is how it's described in the success video, um, he actually slammed his book down and said, this isn't possible, why is this happening? Rather than, woohoo, we've got somebody regressing their mess. That's what we're dealing with. That's, you know, some of the mainstream medicine is ridiculous. But yes, can it help it? Definitely. And if anyone says, well, that's just one man. Well, no, that isn't. It is one man in that story. We've also got a, a female that's uh, reversed her MS. And I've had written uh, reviews saying about the MS uh, symptoms regressing, you know, beyond belief. So, yeah. But uh, Rich, how, do you want to answer the stomach one? Um, settling down, yeah, it's it's different for everyone. Um, I mean, we're coming from a lifetime of what better way to describe this of of, of abuse. Um, we've been feeding our gut microbiome the wrong compounds, and your gut will adjust and adapt to the compounds that you put in. So, if you're feeding it grains and sugars, then this is how your gut will adapt. The second you stop that, the gut microbiome. Di- uh, dies off in in effect and then you know regenerates in regards to um uh, the right type which is the bacteria bacteroidetes uh phylum opposed to the firmicutes which is still there but one predominates the other um it can take time uh i mean for me it it, it took a couple of weeks in regards to to gastro issues um but then fat was causing problem for me. So I had to limit the excess fat that I was consuming. I couldn't consume any of the rendered fat. Um, when I was cooking my mince, I had to drain the fat off and eat it without the fat. Now I poured it all over. Um, and with the you know the chicken skin and things, I had to make sure that I didn't over consume that sort of fat. And I had to be careful what oils I was cooking in. Um, but weeks to months i guess look i know it's impossible to put a figure on this and it's different for everybody but um consistency is key consistency is key just keep pushing forward if you ha- if you are struggling then um reduce the fat if you are still struggling then it could be an enzyme issue in regards to the enzymes digesting the protein so you could look um at something like serapeptase to maybe help with that but it um you know, you, you could argue that you could put bile salts in initially to help digest the fats, but then you're not signaling your body and giving your body an opportunity to upregulate those those systems and pathways. Um, so I'm not a big fan of adding those in when, you know, I think we're going to see a bigger benefit just by persevering and, and making those little tweaks. So reduce the fat a little bit, but weeks, weeks to months, but it's, it is different for everybody. You muted, Steve. Said yes. Uh, um, or have slightly more frequency of your meals, or slightly yeah. less. You know, so just think to yourself, oh, and I, I still want to eat this volume of food, and I'm, I'm doing two meals a day. We'll do four meals a day. But but the same volume of food, but just less at each sitting, so half at each sitting. Try that for a bit as well. There's lots of different ways of doing it. Uh, anyway, that's our time. I will make sure that this playback is available ASAP. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Your support means the absolute world to me. And if you're enjoying the show, I've got a small favour to ask you. I'd be incredibly grateful if you would consider becoming a supporter and make a small monthly donation. Your contribution will really help to improve the show. I'll be able to improve the software, maybe put a few more episodes out and do many things that I'm hoping to do in the future. Do them a lot quicker. So it's a small monthly contribution. You can cancel at any time and the link is in the show notes. Thanks very much for listening.